Hello everyone, this is Decrypt and today I'm going to show you how to solve the hack try hack me machine in tunnel. So right off the bat, you first scan the, the network, uh, expose services on the victim and I've already done that. So this is the command syntax and map dash pn for probe not dash sv for version uh, version probes dash sc for script scan dash om to output in nmap format. I'm going to save it in the file called internal.htb. Uh, so, and then I'm going to have the victim's IP right here. So, once you run the scan, you see something like this. So, let's look over this. So, we have put 22 and 80 based on this, the top 1000 ports that were scanned as, as part of this command. So we are also interested in knowing what other ports might be open on the system. So I have kicked off a complete scan on the system already and it's still running. So while it's still running, let's go and try and take a look at port 80 and see what's, uh, what we can find there. Okay, so we have a default Apache page. So one condition for this box is to actually have the the host name which is the internal.thm on the host file on the system so let's go and do that so let's add let's let's open this nano etsy file and i've already done it so let's add the new latest ip here so we have it and save it so let's go to internal.dhm and see what we can find there. So we see your default page. Next step is to try and identify some of the directories that might be present on the server. So I'm going to use the go buster for that and put in dir mode, IP, uh, sorry, the host name. Wordless, I'm going to use the directory uh, dir buster wordless that's, that's come before with the installation here. So we open world list, Durbuster, directory list, 2.3 medium, and I'm going to use 50 threads for it. I'm going to scan for extensions like PHP because it looks like it's a PHP application, but let's just confirm. So we do HTML here and we find this PHP here don't find it so it could be PHP but we just not found the the app yet because the default page for this is the Apache page so I'm gonna have PHP still uh, brute force here and include HTML text files and maybe log so I'm gonna save this in a file called GoBuster 4.80 dot log and let's see so while we discover uh, we see this running let's go also take a look at the scan results for the pulse, uh, full port scan we still we see it's still running and we have a couple of directories found uh, with the 301 status which means that we have a uh, redirect for that so 99 percent of the times when you see 301 uh, it could mean that it's just missing the slashes right here. So, so let, let's try and make sure that's the case. So if you open blog, you're going to see it's going to redact us to blog and a slash uh, added to end of it. So if you want to make sure that you're getting the correct results, you'd uh, add a dash F here, which will include the slashes while it's brute forcing. So that's it. Uh, let's go back and into the into the app and also take a look at the WordPress directory here and we see the same uh, but we see we also see an error page so let's go back and in any any typical WordPress uh, installation the very first thing is to find try and identify or enumerate the users so let's go and take a look at the post and we see that it's the first post was by admin so we have a potential uh, username here so we could we could have also found this by uh, doing a WordPress scan and enumerating the users but I think that's not needed here because we already have 
an author identified. So if you want to confirm, uh, please use uh, the syntax that we followed in my previous videos to do a WordPress scan and enumerate for users. But I'm going to skip over that and go to the admin, uh, go with the admin that we have. So let's go and navigate to the login page. I'm guessing it should be found by the WordPress scan here, uh, by the directory brute force here. Um, yeah, it won't because we are not scanning for the, the directory slash blog. Um, so we can either guess it or we can do another scan on this directory but I don't think it it adds any value because we pretty much are aware that we are in a CTF kind of environment and we should be having a login page like this so let's try and confirm that we have a user called admin put rubbish or some rubbish for the password and you can see that it says the password you entered for the username admin is incorrect so which means that the admin is a valid user so I'm going to go and try and brute force the admin password here. Um, so we're going to use WordPress scan for that. And we're going to use uh, dash dash URL. And copy the URL for the app. And I think the syntax goes like dash dash passwords is we're going to use rock you list. And I think the user is admin. So uh, the username goes like this. Let's see. We'll see if it's working or not. So, you know what? Let's take a look at the help. And so we need dash what? Let's take a look again. Uh, we did the URL here and we did the passwords. And what if uh, I guess we don't need the dash dash username here? Maybe? Yes. So looks like we don't need to specify the dash dash username uh, kind of argument if you're only supplying one username. And if it's and I think that should be an admin and not just any user that you found. So, yep, we found the user admin and we have uh, a valid user called admin. So we also have the XML RPC uh, and it's trying to brute force uh, the user's name. So you can you can ask me why we brute force this. So basically. On any WordPress installation, if you find a, uh, a user called admin, it's vulnerable to brute force attack uh, because admin accounts cannot be locked out. So it's kind of a, a, a severe misconfiguration if you found any WordPress installation out there on the internet that has an admin, uh, your user called admin enabled because WordPress is not going to enforce any kind of account lockout policies for that particular account. So we know that we can brute force uh, weak passwords using that. So that's exactly what we're doing. So while it's still brute forcing, let's take a look at the port scan and see where we are. So you press, uh, press any key uh, if you want to get the status, uh, except some of the keys like uh, V, which is for verbos, D for debug level, and all those kinds of stuff. So you can look up the man page for nmap for all that. So we'll see. I hope this doesn't take too too long. That, those are some of the funny uh, password combinations that we have right there. Uh, we'll see. I would make sure to put in a timestamp where I have found the password. Fortunately, the recorder, the, the screen recorder that I'm using that doesn't currently have, uh, doesn't have a the pause option so please feel free to skip over to the part where I have found the password oh uh, looks like we also have a PHP admin page here uh, I've stopped the brute forcing because it looks like we are getting somewhere already with the 
the WordPress brute forcing, but we'll also take a look at the PHP page. Okay, so let's try the default MySQL password. So PHP uh, credentials are same as the, the credentials for the MySQL, uh, MySQL service that's running on the machine. So by default, it's root and empty uh, for no password and just click go and see if that's working. Uh, it looks like it's forbidden by configuration. So let's try some default password like root or admin password. Okay, so probably don't have a guessable password or we just might have to brute force it. But we don't want to brute force it too much because this might lock out the account if this is uh, protected. So that's something you gotta get, uh, keep that in your mind. But let's say there's a setup page for PHP admin pay, uh, installation where we can go and you know uh, register a new installation. Uh, oh, that too is protected. Let's see, admin admin root empty root root. Okay, so admin password root password. Okay, so we can actually try to brute force this. Um, to get to the setup page, and that's exactly what we, we're going to do. Uh, let's see, if we can open Hydra and use username root and password and user share, the list and lock queue, and what else? So we need to specify the host and we need to specify the port and so dash f will be the host so let's specify dash f if you're wondering what this is this is the syntax for brute forcing a basic authentication so we'll do http dash uh, get for this and see if we got the syntax right uh looks like we don't uh Okay, I missed the HTTP here. Yeah, so as you can see, we have a HTTP GET on this, and HTTP GET is basically is going to do a, a brute force. So let it run and see. We'll go back and check if we have any password found by the WordPress scan. And looks like we have. So let's take a look and we have already uh, had experience with exploiting WordPress admin console. So it's going to be quick and easy for us. I think we can probably stop uh, brute forcing the PHP side and uh, just to save the computation and also the full port, uh, full port scan. I don't think we need that anymore and let's go and save this and probably the next you know uh next feasible option we want to have here is to get a reverse shell for that we need to know our uh, local ip so i'm going to find my ip here and i got it the next step is to have a php shell ready so Let's go to themes editor. We go to 404 page and control all delete and let's see PHP reverse shell one liner. I'm gonna open the uh, actually I'm gonna actually use this. Uh, and wrap it up with exec because that's easy for me. So let's copy this and write PHP and exec. So we put this and we copy this here 
and change the IP to attacker machine. Uh, I'm going to listen on port 443. So this looks good, but I think we need another bash outside of this to kind of uh, invoke this command. So let's put dash bin, dash bash, C for command, and let's execute this. So don't forget to close the page here. Uh, the closest index for this page. So the next thing we need to find an invalid page. That's not too difficult to find. Before that, we'll just open our listener on port 443. Okay, so switch to root and do the same. Okay, looks like it's already in use. We gotta use another port. So just go and make sure we modified the port here. Update the file. And let's copy this and go here and look at Hello World, for example, and change this to some, some something like this. And we have our shell. So first step is to upgrade our shell. Use Python TTY shell for that. So I'll do a p device spawn in bash and let's export the term variable and control z next thing we're going to use sgty raw minus echo so if we have the ability to use the up arrow to get the history on uh, on this uh, one more thing I gotta I want to do is to make sure we have this uh, SGTY shell uh, session uh, set to full full screen. So we use this. We take uh, we copy that from our machine here and put that on the victim machine. So so that we have the full screen for ourselves. So that the commands or the type on the screen won't get wrapped around. So we that. Let's say who we are. I'm expecting we to be a WW data. So let's just confirm we are WW data. Can we sudo? No, we can't uh, because we need to know the password. So let's quickly take a look at the users. Okay, we have our Bruana. And let's see if we can access this directory okay we don't uh, have access to that the next common thing is to see we have if we have vulnerable linux version running on this machine so we have this and uh, just quickly search google for any relevant exploits so we do have one for uh, we have actually a couple of them uh this looks promising but let's see so what we're doing here is we are uh, creating something we need a compiler on the machine which i don't think we will have anyway so let's uh just confirm which we have uh, G let's anyways confirm that we have gcc involved uh install no we don't so but we'll just take a mental note of the possibility of using one of these two exploits right here but we, we are not going to look at it right now uh as true we are going to first enumerate as much as possible and that's uh let's use the lintb script for that i think i have the lintb script from my last machine so convert uh, i think Lintbees. Okay, I don't. So let me have it in my tools. I don't. 
So let's try it one more time on retro. Uh, okay, that was Windows machine. So anyways, let's download the LinP script. Uh, so we're going to need the Linux script. So open, take a raw and copy the URL and get it to this directory. So I'm, well, we're going to serve that over uh, using the Python HTTP server. Dash M for module, HTTP server, and we're going to use port 8000. And let's go to our attacker machine, switch over to the temp directory where we usually should have the right access and let's download that. Okay, so I think we need uh, missed the port number here. Cool, we have it. So I'm not going to run this on full screen because I want to use this time to take a look around the system. So I'm going to pipe it into uh, piece dot out. You can read it as piece out. So I'm going to use the ampersand here to run that in the background and let's see so let's take a look on the different directories and see if we have anything unusual i know limpies is gonna do that for us but let's do it anyways so we have an unusual file called cd-rom so these are uh, some of the warnings from the limpy script uh, i don't know how a way to make this not pop up in middle of some you know randomly like this but let's go back so we have cd-rom that's not something we find usually or you know we don't expect anything interesting here but just take a look for any uh, anyways so we don't have anything here okay so what else we have uh can we go to root we can't Oh, my typing skills are getting horrible by day. And so again, these are the results from the piece. Looks like it's done, but let's quickly finish our uh, the, the search on the machine. So let's take a look at war. So I'm, I'm just gonna take a look on the top level directories here and see if we have something that's unusual actually we might find something on war www usually because that's the web directory and it's interesting uh, place to find some passwords or something like that so let's go use wordpress and see what we have okay uh, we have wp config file and that's somewhere you, we usually find the database credentials but I'm not sure how useful it's gonna be but yep so we have the database passwords it doesn't hurt to take a copy of it and take a copy of it and save that somewhere like make a notes on your machine and just put it out there okay let's go back and we did we did a look into the war file uh, directory let's take a look uh, I, I think we also looked into the user but let's try uh, take a look again we, this time we'll run with la to also show the hidden files nothing unusual uh, on the top level directory so let's go and take a look at other characters so you can do this manually or you can run a command to print all top level directories. Uh, I'm just going to do it manually and you know, maybe it's going to take me extra couple of minutes, but I can get it run, uh, get it done 
real quick. So we do slash sys. Okay, nothing unusual there. And what else? Sys. I don't think we have anything here, but yeah, we don't have anything on the serve. Snap is where we have the, the, the snap installation files and binaries. Uh, not so interesting to us. Sbin is again a directory for the binaries, so I'm going to skip over the Sbin. Take a look at run. That was not a good idea. So we found a lot of things. Uh, we have UDEV, there's some kind of uh, UDEV exploits that are available outside, but you need to be running a vulnerable version for that. Uh, if we have something on UDEV, we will find that out on the LinPiece results. So let's skip over and keep looking on other directories. So we looked at run, we don't have access to root, so we can take a look at proc and see if we have anything unusual there proc or the process related files so each number you're seeing here or could be a process so for example we can't take a look at this process 1942 here because obviously it's it's being run as root and we can also not take a look into our Burana's processes so that's something to have in your mind Having that said, uh, let's go on. Uh, just a couple more directories and let's take a look into the opt or opt if you want to call it that way. So slash opt. We do find something here. Let's take a look into that file. That is awesome. So we found our Bruana's credentials here. So let's take a copy of it and make a note. In fact, uh, yeah, that should be fine. Let's cat this note so we can use it when we want. So I'm not going to keep continuing on this because we have obviously found credentials for uh, our Bruanas. We can do a SU as that user, but I prefer using SSH because we can see from our initial scan, uh, we find the port 22 open. So let's SSH in as our Bruana. So let's do SSH. Uh, copy this. At internal THM because we have uh, the, the IP address stored in the file. It should work fine. Let's trust this. And bubble com exclamation at that's a really secure password. So. Cool, we are in as our Bruana. So let's go to home directory and find the, yeah, it's just to op our Bruana's directory and list of contents. We have the user, so we catch and count. Okay, so there we have the user flag. Let's also take a look at the Jenkins text file. Internal Jenkins service is running on. Okay. But this is confusing because we have a different IP for this machine. Uh, so I'm suspecting this is running on some kind of dockerized or containerized environment. Uh, so let's just confirm that but we do know that it's running on port 8080 so if it's running on this machine we should have some kind of service listening on port 8080 so let's do an edge stat and t for that and so next uh, stat is going to give you all no uh, no resolution for the ips so n will give you the ips 
and P is for the TCP uh, connections. And we do see here, we have four ports listening. So 22 is listening on all interfaces, which is zero. And the other services are listening on only local IP. So looks like there is a 8080 port listening. And with the notes that's saying, uh, you know, let's take a look again. It says internal Jenkins service. So we would expect a Jenkins admin console or whatever uh, on that port. So let's curl that and see if we can get something right there out of that. So let's see. Okay. So looks like we have a permission issue and it's going to replace that with login so let's go and do slash login and we have a different response this time i'm looking for the word jenkins right here so we see it says sign in on jenkins okay so now that we know we have found a jenkins service I know that we also did the the scan the enumeration script using linpiece, but looks like we don't have to take a look because all hints are pointing us towards the Jenkins that's running on the system. So we know that it's running on the local port, and we need to be able to look at that uh, reach that port internally. And since we have an SSH port open on this machine. We could try uh, SSH and do a port forward to uh, port forward to our host machine, uh, that hacker machine. That way, we are able to browse through the service as if it's just an exposed uh, service. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So we go here. I've already pulled out the page to, stay, to save the time. It's called local forwarding. We're going to forward our local port uh, uh, of any of our choice. It could be AD or anything to remote local port so let's copy this let's copy and go here so we do take a uh, paste this here and we also want to uh, use our Bruana's credential so let's do the notes again copy this at internal.thm before we click enter we need to take rid of that because we are going to log in to the internal thm and the service is running on port 8080 and it's not intra it's just a local ip because the service is running on local ip and we're going to use our local port maybe 8080 or it was 8081 and so that looks good uh, specify the password okay okay that's cool so this one zombie process secure internet connection so we have a bunch of information but looks like it was successful because we do not have any kind of syntax errors so with that said we should be able to comfortably go to our local host on port 8081 to log take a look into the channel case yes so if you're still wondering what we did so we used our local port 8081 which is here and the syntax is dash l and we are forwarding that to an ip that this machine can access which is the internal.thm so internal thm can access its own local ip so we put that here so for example if it were to be a different system say internal can access uh, super secret thm uh, which is a whole different machine when we had to put the IP of the supersecure.thm machine here. So this is the 
basically this is the IP that we want to eventually reach. Uh, we want to eventually try and reach the internal THM's local IP, so that we put here, and we want to reach the port 80 on running on the local IP, so we put that here, and that's how it worked. So something tells me the Jenkins could be running some kind of vulnerable versions. We look at a page source and see if we find versions. We can't. Uh, we can also search Google Jenkins default login. Yes, admin slash password. So let's try admin and password here. Okay, we don't have it. And let's see Jenkins exploit. Let's look at this. So, secret realm user admin and see if let's see if we can access this page from here. We can't. Uh, Let's take another closer look. We're missing something here. Mm. We're missing ask Jeeves, but that's the path of the application. We don't have a path. We are in security realm and should be working without any, if, if it is vulnerable, of course. So, uh, looks like we have to find a way to find the app or maybe this is not vulnerable. But from just looking at it, uh, I'm I'm gonna try and brute force it because why not? So let's do the brute forcing work. Uh, for that, we're gonna use the Hydra again, uh, maybe, or uh, we can use another tool that you of of your choice, like Zap or Burp. Uh, we'll see which one is gonna work for us. So we'll capture the the traffic from here and go to network. And click sign in so we see the post here and click edit and send and we see this so with that said let's see if I can use uh, burp to brute force this I am sure uh, it's gonna have some issues because burp intruder in the free version is not that very useful uh, hopefully we don't crash the burp uh, trying to brute force, but let's see. Uh, let's try take a look. Also make sure that we're pointing to burp, so the traffic. So that's kind of a reason why I used uh, port eighty eighty one as opposed to eighty because. I was kind of expecting this kind of issues. Uh, so yes, we have the burp open right here. So since we have burp, uh, we don't we no longer need to capture traffic. So burp is automatically going to capture traffic for us. So let's send this intruder, drop this, do refresh, and let's turn off burp. So in intruder, go to positions, first clear everything out. Uh, we're gonna brute force the password. So add uh, the position for this, and we're gonna use the sniper node. We're gonna use a bunch of, uh, we're gonna use a file for brute force. So go to select file. I'm gonna use the user share uh, rock queue wordless. So go here. Hopefully, I don't crash app, uh, the burp trying to do brute force. Uh, okay, it says it's not. Some features are throttled. Let's say it's fine. And take a look. And we can try, you know, keep looking at it as if brute forces. 
but it's going to take a while. So let's see if we have to wait too long or we found the password in, uh, earlier. So as you can see here, this common thing that every pass, every every request is returning a 302. And even I know that uh, a legitimate login attempt would return 302 because that's that's how the login functionalities in the application work. Uh, uh, they redirect app for authentication. So looks like we cannot just rely on the status code for the app uh, here. So we may have to use go by the content length maybe so that, you know, uh, if if we have a different content like than the 351 here, we might know that that's something that we want to look at. So let's wait a few more minutes and see if this will uh, actually get us something. Again, I will leave a link uh, on the on the description for for the part where you can skip to the actual. Uh, time in the video where I have found the password. So with that said, we actually found something. So let's take a look at this response. So we have SpongeBob and we have a different length. So let's take a little response for this versus this. As you can see, we have a cookie for this, whereas the other ones do not have any cookies assigned. So that looks like it could be a potential password for us. So I'm gonna try and take a uh, guess and you know, not a guess. I'm gonna try and use a password sponge bulb and see if that works. Um, let's pause the tag for a moment and allow the service to respond and we see a dashboard. So that was it. So let's close Burp. And I'm not sure if I had crashed it. No, I haven't. So, okay. It's pretty straightforward from here. Uh, we see the security alarm uh, here, but something that we need to be aware of is you don't need an exploit to exploit uh, a logged in Jenkins console because Jenkins has this feature under manage Jenkins and go to script console. If you can read here, it's going to say type arbitrary. The word arbitrary is stressed because that's where we want. So arbitrary Groovy script to execute on, on the server. So we can try a write and write a Groovy script to get a shell back to our machine and go, go from there. So let's uh, not exit because we are relying on, on the SSH tunnel for this session. So open a new tab. So switch user to root, type password. I'm going to listen on put 4443. Okay, so a little bit of Google search, you'll find a potential ways to exploit it. So I, I found this link here to be useful. So let's copy that and put it here. So we want to change the command here. Uh, well, let's see. So let's first see if it's working, right? So let's run ls and we see the listing. But let's see if we where we are right because it could it is potentially running on a docker uh so it could be that it's it's, it's a docker environment so let's do u name dash a here okay so as you can see the host name says it's Jenkins. so it should be a docker so it looks like we have a potential uphill battle from here to find and way uh, to break out of the docker but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyways, coming back, uh, we're looking for a potential cell, uh, shell on this box. So we have, uh, oh, boy, oh my bad. So that was not what I expected. Copy that back and go to the terminal. 
and we're also running on port 443 that's good but let's just stop it for a moment and write a bash or uh, shell script for us so we're gonna call shell shell hash bang and we're gonna use the same uh, script from the one liner from pentest monkey and just copy this over here let's use port 4443 and 1068.225 and that should be it and we're going to serve this file uh, on our machine so that we can first download this file on the on the docker and then uh, run it from there so okay we forgot dash m for module so we do that so let's go back here into the, uh, the groovy scripting console which is right here so let's do double get and type the ip here and we've named it shell.shell let's save it somewhere we can find easier so we save it dash o uppercase and we'll save it here let's run this if if it works we should see a request we don't because we forgot the port number so let's try again as expected we see the, the file being pulled so let's make sure the file is present in the directory where we downloaded it and we do find find it so let's explore <laughs> let's run the exploit which means running the shell script here before that we need to be listening on port 4443 uh, which i'm doing and we have a shell on the container so let's see who am i it says jenkins shell root so it's permission denied so let's see the home and we don't find anything on home so if you remember so let's export term term because it's annoying so if you remember we found the the notes about the obruana's password on the slash opt so let's take a look at opt again and list of files uh this is you know it was a wild guess so we might not always find this here but let's take a look here and it says we will want to use these credentials secure behind jenkins container because we have multiple days of defense so use them if you need access to the resource crown and voila so that gives us a potential root password let's go to Abruana's shell that we have we had earlier switch user root and we have shell as root so let's go to root and list the files here and we have root.dex and that's it guys so we have shell as root on internal uh, the name got internal because we are exploiting an internal service so we looked at in this video we looked at how we can leverage the default admin name on wordpress account uh, to boot for password and also we looked at how to do a port for port for the port forward using ssh and land on a service that's running on internal ip so with that said i think you i hope you learned uh, quite something in this video uh, please uh, leave a subscribe like comment if you found this to be useful and until then decrypt